Hello and welcome back. Today's video is for brand new fall decor projects for you all to enjoy. If you're new here, hi, I'm Faith and you're watching Willoughby DIY. Like I said, I have fall projects for you all today. I have four of them to be exact. Three are for my bathroom. It's just to change out my normal decor for some more fall themed items. The non-bathroom item I have is at the very end and it's just a little chalkboard sign. It's mostly for me to write like shopping list on, but you can use it for whatever you want. First up today, I have just this simple fall floral arrangement. And I took some lamb's ear, two picks from Walmart, then a pick of blooming branches and mini moms, both from the Dollar Tree. I'm gonna just bend the stems on the lamb's ear because I really don't wanna cut them at all and stick them in that wooden pencil holder from the Dollar Tree, the round one. I'm gonna trim the other stems off of their base stem, remove the leaves from the blooming branches, and then add some floral foam right inside there. And then we could just add in our florals. I just wanted something really simple to change out my bathroom arrangement and this was perfect. It's just to sit on the back of my toilet on top of a tray but it's very fall like but still not too much fall. You know, it's got cool tones, it's nice. Next are these stacked pumpkins which I just took some leftover pumpkin halves from last week's video and I'm going to paint them. So the first one is the white one and I used this Territorial Beige by Apple Barrel to just deepen those crevices, just darken them a bit. I paint it on, wipe it off with a paper towel, then do some dry brushing with the beige color. And then I just take some antique parchment to give it sort of some highlighted parts on the unpainted portion. And that's it for that one. For this one, I painted it this navy blue from folk art and it took two coats to completely get rid of that orange tone and then once that was dry I added a little white into that navy blue to brighten it a bit and we're gonna add some speckles on the top and bottom of this pumpkin I did bring the speckles up just a little bit but I left the middle pretty much untouched and I do take this country gray and give some lighter speckles on the blue ones and then I put some white in that country gray to lighten it some more and I just use that color to create highlights and add more depth to these pumpkins. For the little pumpkin, I used Pool Blue by Apple Barrel and it took three coats to cover the orange. Once that was dry, I went in with um, the Country Gray and painted the crevices with that. On top of that gray color, I used the Territorial Beige again and I painted that on the top and bottom middle parts of the pumpkin as well. Then I used just plain white to add some brighter portions to the blue parts. And then once it dried, I just took all those paints and added more and more to it until I was happy with it. I really just wanted to tone that blue down a lot and make it sort of washed out and super detailed and from a distance. <laughs> Then I just took the little stem from that pumpkin, gave it one coat of the Country Gray and let it dry. For this green pumpkin, I'm using Country Gray again and it took three coats to completely eliminate the green. But once it was all done and the final coat was nearly dry, I took antique parchment and put some stripes. And basically it's the same kind of design that it had originally with the green but I'm adding more stripes and then I'm adding some incomplete stripes I guess just like where they don't reach the top and the bottom of the pumpkin it's just a piece of a stripe <laughs> and I just do that until I like the way it looks once all of your pumpkins are dry you can take one of these huge popsicle sticks that I get from Walmart and a big pack of them and we're gonna just glue use hot glue and glue those pumpkins on in a stacked pattern so I start with this big wide gray one at the bottom. You want to let all the pumpkins dry completely, uh, the glue dry completely before you move on to the next one. Then I stacked on the blue, then the white, and I'm reattaching the stem to the mini pumpkin with a little hot glue. And then we're going to glue it right on top of the white one, 
just a little off center so it looks like it's about to fall off <laughs> and taking this Dollar Tree raffia I'm going to cut six inches of it and create kind of a tassel by folding it in half and then wrapping the bottom with some jute and securing with hot glue then I'm going to take this farmhouse ribbon and make a really really simple bow with kind of long tails on the ends nothing fancy we're going to glue that raffia tassel right to the right of that pumpkin and the bow right on top of the raffia with hot glue. Taking a foot and a half of this brown nautical rope from the Dollar Tree, I took one of the three thick strands off of it, folded it in half, and about two and a half, three inches down from the open end, the, uh, the cut ends, I wrapped some jute, glued it, then we're gonna remove any excess of the craft stick we have, and cut that off and then staple on that nautical rope on the back for a hanger. Then I just hot glued the ends of the ribbons, the tails of the ribbons down exactly where I wanted them to stay, trim the ends, and then to keep everything stable and so the the hanging wouldn't like tilt forward, I added a tumbling, tumbling tower block to the back at the bottom with some hot glue, and that was it. And I just love this piece. It it's perfect for a room that you have a lot of cool tones in, but it still is rustic and so much fall vibes. I just love it. <laughs> so cute. Next up is my birch forest painting. I took a 8x10 stretch canvas from the Dollar Tree and gave it a base coat of this Elephant Gray by Apple Barrel. Took one coat to fully cover it. And I'll let it dry. It's still a teensy bit wet when I start the, the white, but it's fine. I'm going to just water down the white just a tad by dipping my paintbrush in the water and then back into the paint and swirling it around. Then we can add in our birch trees. I used three different sizes of paintbrushes to get different thicknesses of trees so that some were thinner and looked like they were further away and some were thicker and looked like they were closer. But once I had all my trees, the base of my trees in with the white, I'm gonna bring that down on the bottoms and the edges of my canvas because that's how I like to do my paintings. If you don't wanna, if you don't like to do that with yours, don't worry about it, paint it whatever color you want. Then I kind of, you know, made an oopsie. I took black and outlined all of my trees with black and I was like, oh my God, I hate this. Like I thought I could build off of it, but it just, I don't know. I guess it just gave me a creative block. So I was like, okay. We're going abstract. <laughs> so while it was still wet, I took the elephant gray again and we're just gonna paint right in there where you see the background and kind of drag that black with it a bit here and there so it's more streaky. And then I do the same with the white trees once again and then dragging the gray and the black with it to add more streakiness. I drop in some bits of black and gray here and there, smooth it out with the white, and just work with all those colors over and over <laughs> until it looks the way I want without letting it dry in between any of this. I do take um, the country gray and add a little bit more detail to the background of the painting um, so it's not just one flat gray color, but really I just kept adding paint, adding paint till I was somewhat happy with it. I mean, it's not perfect, but I don't know. I kind of like it. <laughs> you could definitely customize this with whatever color paint you want to use for your trees to make it even more abstract, or you could add in greenery or maybe some flowers, yellow flowers or something, and make it your own. But once this painting is completely dry, you can go in and add a layer of Mod Podge on the outside to protect not just the painting itself, but the integrity of the color of the paints. Once it's dry, it's done and you can hang it wherever you want. I hung mine right above my toilet, <laughs> right next to my stacked pumpkins. And it's, it's cute, I like it. Last but not least, is this fall chalkboard sign. You just need this chalkboard sign from the Dollar Tree. And it has the little pumpkin cut out up at the top. We're just gonna get it ready. For this project, we're going to remove the hanger, take some sandpaper, sand the back top and bottom portion of this with that sandpaper. I'm sorry if you can hear my air conditioner. Anyway, once that's all sanded, it's about four or five inches down from the top and up from the bottom. 
dust it off, clean up your workspace, and fill those holes from the original hanger with wood filler or this lightweight spackling like I got from the Dollar Tree. Then we're going to mark off a rectangle in the middle of the sign using some masking tape. Place five inches from the top and the bottom and a half inch from the left and the right. Cut off any unnecessary tape and it's time to paint. I am using Folk Arts Brush Metal Paint in Brush Gold and I love this color. It's so pretty. But I cover the front except for the tape portion and the sides of it in case you see it from the side. The edge is painted and I do two full coats of this. If you want it to be more opaque you could let the second coat dry fully and add another layer but two is good for me. Then we're going to create some embellishments. I cut a couple of strips of this burlap cloth and then I took this buffalo check bandana I got from Michaels a while back and cut a couple strips of that as well. Um, this strip here I also had to cut off the seams because the bandana but this strip here is the same size as the burlap until I cut it in half like you see me doing and then I'm going to cut a little square rectangular piece of the buffalo check to put behind the pumpkin cutout. I took a couple of craft sticks, trimmed off the ends, and I'm going to glue that to the back of that rectangular shaped piece of cloth just because I want to have a bit more control over this piece of cloth and I want more surface area to be glued down to the back so it doesn't pop off. Once you get that first glue, uh, craft stick glued to the sign and it fully dries, add your glue to the second craft stick and then pull this kind of tight so that you work out any wrinkles or kinks in the fabric you might have and then you can glue down the edges of the fabric to keep it from flipping up on you and you see in the wall behind it <laughs> using that uh, uh, strip of burlap and one of the strips of the buffalo check fabric we're going to glue the buffalo check right in the middle of the burlap and then we need to scrape off some of that paint on the bottom of the sign right in the middle so that the hot glue will fully adhere to the sign to attach our burlap buffalo check ribbon flip it over glue down the back edges to the back of your sign and to for extra security i added a couple of craft sticks because i can't help myself <laughs> i do feel like this was necessary for these definitely once those are attached um you can create it you can create a hanger i used some leftover wire from I think my chicken wire packaging. I just took a couple pieces, twisted it together, and I'm going to make it be a hidden hanger behind there. Since I'm going to staple it, I used another craft stick to go on top of the first craft stick. You don't have to cut it. I don't know why I did that. And then we're just going to staple it right on there. And it's time to create a bow. So I cut some strips of burlap and cut that other strip of buffalo check in half. And sadly, for one reason or another, I paused the filming of my video to go do something and then I forgot to restart it. So I lost the footage of me making the bow and attaching these leaves. But on the bottom of the sign, I just attached two of the leaves from the Dollar Tree sunflower pick as well as one of the sunflowers. Super simple. The bow is really simple too. It's just that burlap and buffalo check fabrics tied in the middle on top of one another along with brown jute, green jute, and some orange and white baker's twine with a little burlap in the middle to cinch it all together and glued it to the top of the sign above the pumpkin cutout. Then just prime your board with some chalk and write whatever you want to on it. For staging purposes, I wrote some ingredients for apple pie, <laughs> but it's really going to be hanging on my pantry door like you see here just for me to write in like something I need to pick up from the store like we run out of bread or cereal whatever but I really like this sign I think it's super cute and that's it guys if you enjoyed this video don't forget to leave that like and maybe consider subscribing if you want to see more tap that notification bell so you know every time I upload I hope you all have an amazing day and I'll see you guys next time <laughs>